So let's say you could set up a little server somewhere on the internet, like a little digital piece of real estate. And let's say after some time of building that little piece of real estate, you are making several thousand dollars per month. Then you can fire up another one and another one and another one. Next thing you know, you're making 10, 20, $50,000 per month. This is something that I actually saw several years ago, but only recently decided to jump in and start taking advantage of this huge opportunity. So today I want to jump in with both feet and really look at how to find, build, set up, and scale a piece of digital real estate. Now the term digital real estate kind of makes it sound like it's some kind of like metaverse type stuff, but it's really not. I, I'm not doing anything with the metaverse right now. I don't think it's going anywhere right now. We'll, we'll see in the future, but this is not about the metaverse. But when I talk about digital real estate, what I'm talking about is the term that was actually coined by uh, John Reese. And I actually first heard about it from Russell Brunson in one of his podcasts. Now, Russell's version requires a lot more like advanced sales and marketing techniques with like funnels and stuff and email sequences and all that. And I actually am going to strip away all of that because I want this to be as simple as possible. I don't want to have to worry about all the business advanced stuff. Not that I can't do it, but it's like, why make it more difficult than it needs to be? So my idea is to have like multiple smaller pieces instead of one big piece of digital real estate doing a bunch of money. I have like kind of smaller pieces, a more diversified portfolio, if you will, across the web, all making a decent amount of money every month. So if you're unclear at this point, uh, digital real estate is in its simplest terms, a website. All right. So it's not anything new. It's been around for since you know the dawn of the Internet. But you know, you could argue that SaaS is a type of digital real estate. Now, SaaS is a lot more difficult uh, to manage than what we're going to be looking at today. But how do you go about building uh, such a business like this? Well, honestly, it's going to be a lot easier just to show you. So I'm going to actually walk you through some of the sites that I'm looking at building myself or potentially looking at acquiring. We'll just talk about the financials, how they're built and everything that you would need to know if you wanted to jump into something like this and make some serious money. So let's just jump right into my computer and we'll take a look. So the first piece of digital real estate that we're going to be looking at is a site called Locate Near Me. And once you see how dead simple this site is and how much money it's actually making, you're going to be jumping on your keyboard ready to make your own version. So uh, let's actually talk a little bit out of order. Let's talk about how much money this site is making and then we'll talk about how to build a site like this. So when you're looking at the financials of really any kind of piece of digital real estate or sites like this, and you can look at SaaS in the same way, although SaaS is usually measured by like, you know, lifetime value of a customer or your LTV. What I always look at here is something called the RPM, and that's the revenue per 1,000 visitors to a site. So if your site gets, you know, 1,000 visitors and it makes $5, then you have a $5 RPM. And YouTube actually uses the same um, when we're talking about AdSense and monetizing a channel, every channel has an average RPM. Now that number can vary widely. Um, a very, very small site um, that does not have a lot of traffic and isn't monetized very well might only get like a $5 RPM or maybe even less. But a big site that you know has lots of traffic and is monetized appropriately could be making well over $100, several hundred dollars in RPMs. And uh, we're gonna look at three different sites today and you're gonna kind of see the range of these RPMs um, and that's gonna give you an idea of how much money some of these sites are actually making. So again, this first site, Locate Near me, I have a tool called SEM Rush, and there's other tools out there uh, like Ahrefs, but it will estimate the amount of traffic. What I have found is that these tools underestimate a lot of the time, but even on here, it's estimating that this site gets 5 million visitors per month. Okay, so 5 million visitors a month to this site. Now, what's the RPM? Because that's how we, we're gonna determine the revenue. Now, I've looked at a, I've looked at a lot of different sites, you have to understand. Um, and this site is monetized only with display ads, from what I can tell. And so they're on probably a higher level ad network like Ad Thrive or Mediavine. And therefore, their RPM is probably at least 30, 50, maybe 70. Um, let's just say an average of 50. So they get $50 for every 1,000 visitors to their site. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more, maybe their traffic is more, maybe their traffic is less. Um, but we're just gonna make a rough estimate here because as you're gonna see, it's, it's a lot of money. 
So five million visits a month um, divided by a thousand because we're looking at per thousand uh, visitors times a $50 RPM is a quarter million dollars. Now, let's just say, okay, maybe they're only getting a $30 RPM. Well, that's still $150,000. What if they're doing 10 million in traffic every month? Well, then they're making 300,000. So you can see the site is easily making over 100K, potentially several hundred thousand dollars per month. Okay, so that's, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars every day is pouring in from this piece of digital real estate. So now we know how much money this site's making. How do we go about building a site like this? And it depends, right? Some sites uh, are a lot more involved than others. As we're gonna see with this site, it's actually insanely easy, like mind-numbingly easy, like so easy that it might be boring to even do. Um, so the way that these sites, almost all of them work, is they get the massive volume of their traffic from the search engines. So if I go to Google and I search for something, they are on the search results page and that's how I get to the site. And that's pretty much a lot of these sites. Some of them I've seen um, you know, drive traffic from social, um, but SEO is a very important aspect to these businesses. As, as I've, we've seen in some past videos of mine, uh, there's plenty of SaaS companies that are taking advantage of SEO as well. Um, so SEO is, is a big factor in a lot of business success because if you can rank for certain keywords, it doesn't really cost you a lot to do that. Um, and you can make an absolute killing doing it as we're, we're seeing here. So uh, in this tool, SEM Rush, I can actually see uh, different information like which keywords that people are searching on Google and how much traffic this site is allegedly getting. So I can look at all of the keywords that they're ranking number one through three on, and you kind of get an idea of the kind of content that this site is creating based on the keywords that um, it's ranking for. So addresses and a lot of you know businesses near a certain area or businesses in a certain area. Um, you know, Roses in Mullins, South Carolina, Spencer's in Wheaton Mall, um, so all sorts of things. The one that I found um, that I thought was good was this Lowe's in Chubbuck, Ohio, oh, Idaho, not Ohio. Um, so Lowe's in Chubbuck, Idaho, and they're apparently number two. So if we go ahead and Google search that, you will see that they are indeed number two. I searched for Lowe's, Chubbuck, Ohio, oh, Ohio. Idaho, they're actually uh, even higher than Yellow Pages, which is kind of crazy because Yellow Pages is a pretty big website. What you're about to see is, is a little shocking, and that's how little this site actually has on, on its page. So if we open up this page, um, very, very simple page, dead simple, right? And I also want to point out this site has about 2 million pages, right? So 2 million pages, and they pretty much all look like this. Right, just information about the store uh, and very little information about the store. Okay, so Lowe's Home Improvement, uh, you know, a rating, uh, their, their hours they're open, the address, and that's really it. You know, they've got some photos uh, and you'll see in a second where they got these photos from and also some comments and you'll see in a sec where they got those from as well. Um, and then some close nearby similar stores, which is actually a pretty important aspect. Um, it's actually kind of useful for the uh, user there. So, but all in all, very, very simple, very, very short page. Uh, and they have millions of pages that look just like this. And again, bringing in millions and millions of visitors, making hundreds of thousands of dollars every month from a bunch of pages just like this. Now your brain's churning. I see it. I see the light bulb above your head. You know, wow, I could make a bunch of pages like this. And yeah, you, you could. Let's look at why I think that this site is not the best and where we could improve and where they're getting all this information from. Uh, so first off, uh, one thing that's obviously wrong is this logo here. This is for Lowe's Foods. Um, this is Lowe's Home Improvement, so it's just wrong. Um, they got a little map here um, that kind of shows the location, the phone number and stuff like that. So these images, what's interesting uh, is they just, well, actually, if you click on one, you can see it's from the yellow pages. So they're actually just pulling images right off of yellow pages and uh, putting them on here on their own site, which, you know, legality. Uh, and all of these reviews and things like that are actually also scraped from around the web, from Google, from Facebook, Foursquare, and Nextdoor. So the way that this site works 
is it basically looks for a, a particular type of store, let's say Lowe's, and then looks, I'm sure, in a you know, zip code or something like that, and then scrapes either Google Maps or uh, you know the Yellow Pages or some other site that has all that information, and then they just programmatically build out these pages. Once you have all of the data for all of the Lowe's locations in the United States, you can then break it down by location and you can make all of these pages programmatically. This is just called programmatic SEO. It's something that I think is really interesting, something that I've been getting into uh, recently. I've done a couple of sites uh, with programmatic SEO. Some have been pretty successful and some have been total failures. Uh, so it's, it's you kind of have to know what you're doing to get it to work if you're building it from scratch. But you can see this is a very, very simple page that could be approved upon in a lot of ways. Uh, all they're doing is pulling information from other sites and then just displaying it. They're not really adding any value uh, for the end user. I could have gotten the same information if I went to the yellow pages. So I think there's a lot of improvement that could be made on a site like this. So locate near me, 5 million plus page views hundreds of thousands of dollars a month uh, just monetized with ads. And the reason you don't see ads, I have ad block on, but they are showing display ads. And that's from what I can tell, the only way that this site is monetized, you know, very easy. They don't have their own products. They don't deal with, you know, customer support. They don't do all the things that you might have to do when you're, you know, running a SaaS business or when you're running a physical product business or, uh, you know, running a much more involved business. They're basically just updating this information uh, every month, or at least they should be. I get my suspicions that they're not uh, because this is kind of some outdated information, like the ratings and the reviews aren't as up to date as they could be. So I feel like they're not actually updating as much as they probably should, but that's really all that you do with a site like this is you just basically rerun your internet scraper and pull all the information again and then just build all the pages over again uh, and then deploy them and that's that's all you do and you just do that every month and uh, you make hundreds of thousands of dollars so I mean like it's insane uh, but that's what sites like this do and there's lots of sites like this if you if you think about it Yelp and um, Yellow Pages and TripAdvisor are all pretty similar to this. They're basically just like millions of programmatically created pages. Uh, so this is, this is a strategy that works because a lot of sites do it. So let's switch gears for a sec. Let's look at a couple sites that are different, right? They're not totally programmatically created. And we'll look at how much they cost to kind of like build and start. Because uh, the, the cost to build a site like this is actually not very high. You just need to basically scrape the internet for a bunch of information, which is not free, but it would not be very expensive. But let's look at a couple other sites so you can kind of get an idea of the like RPMs and like how widely that ranges. So another site uh, that we have some more solid information from, this is a site that's actually for sale right now on Flippa called Night Thrive. And it is a, again, a display ad site and some affiliate um, content site based in, you know, Las Vegas travel. Okay, so this site makes around a thousand dollars a month and gets 45k page views per month so we can calculate the rpm and the rpm is about 24 all right so you know, 1100 dollars a month divided by 45,000 page views is a 24 rpm okay so we've got a 24 rpm on this site which is kind of low right compared to you know um the, the previous site um but it's it's not bad right at 24 rpm is not bad but it, this site's probably under monetized uh, compared to some of its peers so taking a look at their site uh it's super simple it's literally just like 10 best street bars or free parking or you know just information about las vegas but it's just a bunch of articles about las vegas now one way uh, to estimate how much it costs to build a site like this is to look at the sitemap. And you can usually find it by doing slash sitemap.xml on the root domain. And this will be a list of all the pages, or roughly all the pages. And we can do a uh, find to see that there's 315 listed. Okay, so this, are, this site has about 300 written articles. Now let's, let's actually look at one of these articles uh, just to see like, you know how big they are or whatever because this is this is how you estimate the cost to build something like this um, so this is 26 best italian restaurants um, and then we what we can do is we can get the word count uh, for this by just doing this and i've got a nice chrome extension this has about 2765 words uh, so it's kind of long 
I wanted to point out that the last site we looked at, I think the average page link was like 300 words, so substantially smaller. Uh, but this site, let's just say on average is about 2,500 words per article. Okay, and like I said, there's 315 articles. So 315 articles times 2,500 words, about 750,000 words, okay? Now, I know how much it costs to hire a writer and write articles, and so I know that it costs roughly two to three cents to write this type of content. Now, it depends on the type of content. If it's very specialized, it might cost more, but information about Las Vegas is not hard to write about, so let's just say it costs two cents per word. That means this site costs about $15,000 to build. Okay, so 15 grand uh, to build a site about Las Vegas called Night Thrive. Now the thing is this site is being sold in auction uh, for 32,000. Now there's no bids on it left and it's still got another two weeks. So we'll see how much it actually sells for. Um, but that's basically doubling your money, right? Uh, you outlay 15 grand, you make 32,000 back. Now that's not even including the monthly cash flow, right? It's making over a thousand dollars every month um, from just ads and um, you know some affiliates or whatever. It's actually made even more in the past. So honestly, this site is not even all that good. And they're still looking at, you know, getting 100% over a 100% ROI on this site. So this is kind of like not nearly as good as the site that we just looked at. And it's actually not as good as the site that we're going to look at next. Okay, but this is just kind of gives you an idea of how kind of wide range these kinds of sites can be. You know, they can make a lot of money, they can make some money, they can make, you know, a, a, a pittance amount of money, uh, but they all are still pretty decent. Like, again, this site's not very good, but it cost them $15,000 to build it. They're selling it for over double that. That's the starting bid, by the way. So it might sell, probably should sell for a lot more than that. We'll see uh, in approximately two weeks how much this site sells for. But I mean, if you were to build a site similar to this, you know, you could you could seriously um, probably start it for even less money than that, and you could probably sell it for even more. All right, this last site that I wanna look at is insane to me. I'm not even sure. I, I still am kind of thinking there's like a glitch or something wrong with this because this site is making so much money for the amount of traffic it's getting. So this is a uh, site in the uh, mental health niche. It's making you know, $2,500 a month and it's only getting 4,000 page views. So if we do the math here, $2,500 over 4,000 page views, that's 625, right? So the last site we looked at had a 25 RPM. This site has a 625 RPM. Now I have not seen very many sites that have RPMs this high. I actually own a site that has like a $300 RPM and I think that that's insane. So this is even crazier than that. Okay, so this site is currently, you know, being sold in the classifieds for 125, hasn't sold yet, but it's not at auction. So $125,000, it's making $2,000 a month. This is actually like, I, I might buy this site. Like this seems like really good because uh, this is not a lot of traffic uh, for just so much money. And the reason, is because this is monetized uh, with affiliates. It's not monetized with ads. It's an affiliate content site. And what you'll find is the these affiliate sites make a lot more money because they directly partner with other brands. Okay, so now this says 4,000 or even 3,000. So the RPM is just, it's in several hundreds. So this is the verified Google Analytics. So this is like, they really are only getting like 4,000 hits a month here. And here's their revenue proof. So the great thing about looking at sites on Flippa and other marketplaces where you can buy and sell sites is you get verified information, uh, roughly verified information of how much a site is actually making. So you can make a better decision if you want to buy it or not. Um, this site is affiliating mostly for BetterHelp. You can see it right here. So BetterHelp is where they're sending a lot of their traffic and they're getting money back from them. And we can even see that they're getting a 10% conversion on the amount of people that they send to their site. So obviously that affiliate is paying them a lot of money. Now let's look at how much it might cost to build a site like this. And uh, you know, I thought a site that's doing this little amount of traffic probably doesn't have that many pages. And uh, I would be right. Uh, so if I look at the site map, we could see that uh, we can look at just the post site map. That's really what we wanna look at. And there's only 134 pages. 
right? And um, if we look at some of these, like I looked at uh, this anxiety counseling near me, near me, that looks familiar to like, you know, one of the sites we looked at earlier, right? Um, so I was thinking you could buy this site and then you could just add a bunch of programmatic pages for anxiety counseling in and the name of the city. Uh, so you could get a ton of new pages uh, that would that would also help you rank for all of these different new keywords and bring in a lot more traffic. And there's there's other ones too, like right? co-parenting counseling near me or co-parenting counseling in name of city. So like you could say you could combine the things that we've looked at today to, to create new things that could be really, really uh, lucrative. Um, so just looking at one of these pages, really simple page and you can see right in the middle call to action to the affiliate uh, the, the one site that I own uh, it's not in the uh, mental health niche but it is in the finance niche and we do the same exact thing right we put our uh, you know highest paying affiliate right in the middle um, and you know basically like hey you looking for something here's here it is this is it go get it uh, and this converts very well and uh, makes a lot of money so you know you might be seeing the the kind of sad side of uh, the mental health market. And that is people make a lot of money off of mental health, which is kind of, uh, you know, sad and unfortunate. You know, these these memberships cost, you know, almost $100 a week. Um, and this site is making a lot of money sending people to again, better help was their biggest affiliate. So the word count of this page is a little over a 1000 words. Um, so they really only have maybe like 150,000 words. Um, so 150,000 words times now the word rate in this niche is probably a little higher for a writer, um, but it's still probably not very much, uh, maybe like three or five, three to five cents. So maybe it's like $5,000. So maybe they spent roughly $5,000 to build out this site. Uh, maybe they wrote the content themselves. But if you wanted to build a site like this, you could hire writers and pay roughly $5,000. And you can see, you know, if you, you pay $5,000, the site is only a year old, right? $5,000 today. And in a year, they had a profit of $5,000 in a single month. And then they're looking to sell this for $125,000. So the ROI on this site is massive, right? The last one we looked at, they were looking at getting a 100% ROI. This site, we're looking at a 25x ROI, or is that 2,400% ROI, which is just like, what? And that doesn't even include the cash flow, right? So just insane ROI on a site like this. So this just shows you the range of how some of these sites, even the, the ones that aren't very good are still making good money. And then the ones that are really good uh, are making massive ROIs. So there is a lot more to building these kinds of sites. This is something that I've kind of gotten into. I acquired a couple sites last year. I've built a couple sites this year and we'll see how they do over the next couple years. But if this is something that's interesting to you watching, be sure to hit the like button and you know, I'll keep making videos like this where we kind of jump into some of these sites and look at how they're monetized and how they're built and kind of give you some ideas of things that you could do to build similar sites. So that is all I have for this video. Uh, if you liked it again, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.